Good morning everyone. Welcome back to Young and Hungry. This is Sir Andy here. So today is all about plantation tour. So we're visiting two plantations today, Laura Plantation and Oak Alley. It's an infamous Oak Alley that you have seen all over the internet and that you have seen probably in the Red Dead Redemption 2 if you have played the game. Uh, this is the young part of the Young and Hungry. Uh, this is where it comes in. Uh, there's no food here at Laura. This is going to be a separate episode that we're just going to explore. I think it's really important uh, when you come to New Orleans to understand the history and the culture. And this is one way to get a holistic view uh, of the place and of, of, of the state. So let's go check it out. And later we're going to stop at Big Plantation, Oak Alley. And then they have an amazing restaurant, Creole restaurant there with authentic Creole food. And that's where we're going to have our lunch. So stay tuned. That's gonna be a separate episode though, so stay tuned for that, all right? Let's go check this uh, Laura Plantation out. Let's go. So the bus just dropped us off like right in this area over here and we're on a tour. Um, so that's where you check in, you know, if you're with a bus and with a tour, you don't have to check in. Our tour is starting in about 10 minutes, so people are taking a bathroom break right now. But this is the drop-off area right here. Okay, okay so we are starting the tour now. So let's follow me. A couple things before we do, watch our footing. Because the brickin' was old, uneven, I don't want y'all tripping, slipping, or anything like that. So we're coming up to the big house right now, and there's a lot of history in this place. Uh, this, used, this was a sugarcane plantation. Uh, I can't film the tour, I can't film the tour guy talking, but I can film the, the ground and the house and everything about it. Just not the tour. So it's really interesting, you know, I, I couldn't film the guy talking, but he said that this house, um, so in order to be Creole, it's, it's, it's a cultural difference. It has to be French-born, uh, no, I'm sorry, you have to have French heritage, you've got to be born in Louisiana, you have Catholic roots, you got to be Catholic. Those, those are the cultural differences that, that make up the Creole, um, you know, uh, heritage. Um, here and, and you know one thing that we need to understand is that um, the the Americans and the Creoles didn't like each other you know like the Americans hated the French you know back in the day and they didn't allow any kind of you know French speaking uh, people in their neighborhood or even like they, they would ban like you know French the language in, in their quarters so it's really to see like back in the day if it's if the house is white it's Anglo it's English speaking you know uh, people living there if it's like color, it's Creole. So this house used to be painted uh, white just so that the French owner would fit in, so that he would feel fit in. Uh, and then, you know, they restored it back to the, the colors that it is today. And actually they had to peel, like, peel up two layers of white paint just to get these colors back. It's so interesting. Let's keep going. Now we look at this map. Very detailed. There's this map here I gotta show you. So it's this map of all the plantations in this area. As you can see, there are hundreds of them. Hundreds of them. All these are sugar plantations because of cotton and uh, wouldn't grow here. I think they were gin too. It wouldn't grow because it's too humid. And this is where we are at right now. The Laura Plantation it is one of the biggest plantations in this area. It's about 12,000 acres. It's the size of Manhattan. And at one point, this map represented 25% of all the world global cotton import, I mean sugarcane import and um, export. It's quite incredible. Quite incredible. And everything here is is the original equipment. So basically the house is built by uh, Senegalese um, slaves, uh, French speaking Senegalese. So they basically built all they cut out all these wood from like uh, from from an area of like 14 miles around here, and then they would bring all these over here a 14 mile uh, trip, 
And then this is called, back, back in the day, we called uh, Maison de Jean. Maison de, de Jean. So the House of 30. So on these, wood, on these posts, you would see like Roman numeral, Roman numeral, and it goes from 1 to 30. 1 to 30. And what the Roman numeral represent is that, and next to the, sorry, next to the Roman numeral, there would be a wooden peg. There would be a wooden peg. And it represents that it's holding a vertical post, so a maison le, le jaune, something, a house of 30, basically it's just a house with 30 wooden vertical posts. So these are holding them up. And these are river clay red brick. So they, they said you do not lean on these because it will leave a real red mark on your clothes. As you can touch it and just look at it. Yeah. Now we're gonna go around and uh, we're gonna check out the inside of the house. So the house suffered a really catastrophic uh, electrical fire in 2004. So what we're seeing today is only half the size of what it used to be, but I'm still really excited. So let's go check out the inside. and all these um, this stuff in the cabinets are a family, uh, belong to their family back in the day, so they, they wouldn't want us to touch anything there. I mean, the toy just stole a very interesting uh, fact about this. This clock, it was donated by a family, uh, and, and, um, another family in, in the state of New Orleans, and basically, you can see the watermark, it's right here. Uh, you see that? This is the watermark um, when Hurricane Katrina hit their home, and this was on the second floor of their home. I mean, it just puts things in perspective, you know? What I want, I play piano, so, oh my god, I cannot. So basically her dad, um, she wasn't around. This is like her Facebook post where back in the day. So she wasn't around, so her dad wanted her to come back here and live here. But she doesn't want to. It's a swampy area with like mosquitoes being the state birds, right? Um, so she was off in like in, in some five-star resort in, in West Virginia. And she was dating this guy, Charles Gore. And you know, when, when the estate was passed on to her, basically what they did was they, they went back and they sold everything. So her dad trying to get her back to the estate and live here and, and work this place. But that's why, you know, he came up with an idea to name this place after her. And this is her bedroom right here. Cool. This is where you pray. A praying chair. This, this would be what she would look like um, at the Rex Ball. That's like the, the elite ball uh, doing Mardi Gras. Incredible. Look at how tiny this bed is. You know, very small, it's like a twin size bed. A little bit bigger than a twin size bed. But she lived to the age of 101. That is incredible, even like in today's standards. Incredible. And today we have a crib room. We have a little baby's room. So anybody who grew up in the house would at some point be kept here as a baby, you know, when, when they were a baby. This is for white and black as well. That blew my mind. I didn't even know that, you know, like, um, you know, African American, you know, like they would keep African American babies in here um, during that time. Quite fascinating. This is where the family would dine every night. Would it come out here and have breakfast? Wow. There will be a little prepping room. Okay, dinner. Burned down both wings of the house. 
Can y'all like that green plaque I'm going to close up downstairs? <clears throat> So we are going outside to check out the grounds here. That's where the kitchen is. And that kitchen used to pump out 500 to 600 meals a day to feed everybody here um, on the plantation. Uh, interestingly, the, the tour guide said that everybody ate the same food here on the plantation. You know, whether you were rich or you were a slave, or you were the owner, everybody ate the same thing. It's rice, bean, yambalaya, it's chicken. Um, there was no beef here. That is something that has to be exp uh, imported and, and brought to the plantation uh, for the owner himself. Um, but for owners themselves quite interesting and this is where you can see you know like where the house where the fire you know, burned the house down so this whole area here you see that, that that line right there this whole area was burned down the two wings of the house were burned down in 2004 from a malfunction computer what a waste <laughs> So we're walking to the kitchen's garden. Um, this is where they, you know, they grew a lot of herbs. Like these are like rosemary. This is a rosemary bush right here that I see. There's a lot of bananas. I see some sugar canes over there. I see some young bananas over here. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But on the way here, um, we passed through like so much sugar cane, so many sugar cane fields. It's big here. And today it's swampy here. I feel I can feel the humidity. It's hot. It's humid. Oof! You can feel it, man. But they have AC in the house, so they installed it. You know, uh, like a I think a, like 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Cool place. Laura, she basically sold this entire 12,000 acre plantation for 12,000 for 19,000 dollars at the time. So the equivalent in today's money is about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for twelve thousand acres, the size of Manhattan. She just wanted to get rid of this place. She didn't want anything to do with this place. It's swampy, and she and her husband spent it all. They didn't leave anything for the kids. Wow. So we're checking out the slave cabins now. So he said that you know the the Creole. Uh, system of slavery is is a little bit different from the American system of slavery is that the Creole system is very integrated um, as you he said that as you have seen in the nursery the the slaves uh, kids would be taken care of and would be housed in the same nursery room um, as the owner's kid and then they would grow up together and they would play as brother and sister but they, at the end of the day one owns the other so it, it's quite different so there's that, and then they would eat the same food. Um, it's not, it, yeah. He said the, on the American plantation, the owner would eat like separate food, you know, different kind of food, uh, much more high quality you know, than the, the slaves, of course. But that's what happened. And he said that uh, per person in the house, per white owner in the house, there would be 11 slaves serving them at all time. It, it just quite insane to think about and you know, the mosquitoes here are insane too. What a fantastic tour that we just had. If you want to learn more about it, you got to Google it. There's so much history. There's so much of uh, gloriness and dark history about this place that you need to learn about. Um, i got to do some more research through. I would love to learn a whole lot more about this place. But that's it for Laura's Plantation. We're going to move on to the next one. So the next one is going to be the Oak 
Valley Plantation. It's going to be in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a thumbs up. Share it to your friends and family. And as always, good luck with everything. Do not give up. Stay young. Stay hungry. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.